Hey everyone, this is the Hydra Hut, and I wanted to talk about Klaus and the Crisis in Expisville. I know I'm supposed to finish another five chapters of the other book, but this just came out on Wednesday. Nobody's really talking about it, so I'm going to. Uh, honestly, I think the reason nobody's talking about it is because it's $7.99. Nope. And that's a lot to pay for a book most people haven't heard of. Uh, Grant Morrison is still writing it. Dan Moore is still doing all of the penciling and coloring and amazing artwork. So, for that alone, I would say it's worth the price. It's also a pretty good story. Let's get started. Uh, there's actually a couple variant covers by Frank Quitely, which I thought was pretty awesome. I couldn't find any. I just got the normal cover. Book opens up with a family riding along in a minivan. Typical family vacation scenario. Uh, kids are being annoying. Father and mother clearly lost. Don't know where they are. They're tripped out by the fact that it's snowing at this time of year and it shouldn't be. Uh, up ahead, they see somebody in the road, some lights. Turns out, it's a whole town they've never heard of, never seen before, and it is full of just cheery-looking Santa Clauses. Uh, even a Santa in a DeLorean. 50... I'm sure that's not 55 cent gas. Gas wasn't 55 cents in 85. Uh, lower down, we see a sign that says, Welcome to Xmasville, establishing that this is the town the story is about. It's a uh, home of Pola Cola. You can see that up here. Nice little Coca-Cola ripoff. As the family pulls into a gas station, the dad decides to see if he can find a phone to use, because in 85 we didn't have cell phones, so that he can call his mom and let them know that they're on their way, but they're kind of lost right now. The Santa's kind of weird, but they, uh, they let him use the phone. Calls his mom, and we can see they're kind of closing in around him. He's, um, he's a little nervous. He's telling his mom about how weird it is. Suddenly the lights go in, the Santa's moving quick, phone disconnects, and they swipe him up and take him into the darkness. Um, there's some pretty cool art here. Really like what he did with the eyes. <clears throat> and we see that they're going to turn him into a Santa Claus as well. Um, I'm pretty sure this is standard operation for all Santa Clauses, so um, nothing out of the ordinary right now. We pan back to the minivan. And the mom thinks she sees the husband. The kids are pretty sure they see the, their dad. And then she realizes it's definitely him. And he's already dressed up like Santa Claus. And he's trying to warn him to get away. But, of course, it's too late. They're surrounded by Santas. And I'm going to read this dialogue. <clears throat> Put that unto work in the factory with the rest of the women. Tis the childer we's after. So here we establish that. The women get to go to work in a factory. I assume building toys and other... Santa related gifts. Later on we might find out that it's actually something else. The husband or men all get turned into Santa Clauses to fuel the Santa army. And the children get taken away and we're gonna find out what for here. It's a little demented. Uh, we also learn that the narrator is actually one of the children. Some more wonderful art of evil Santas stealing people pan down to who we can assume is in the lead having his Santa army march again um, this is all looking pretty standard so currently it's just a normal Christmas story nothing out of the ordinary uh, we jump back to the grandmother who the uh, the family called from the gas station earlier and uh, we have this nice little shooting star looking thing but we find out it was actually fired from this gun here which was a gift to her from Klaus who happened to show up she says let's see here we learned that her name is Kate and it's been a long time since she's ever been called Kate and it really brings back a lot of memories and look at Santa look there's even a picture of him on the wall in the background I'm assuming that's Kate You noticed that before. Well, Kate is very, very worried about her family not showing up, especially with the odd call that she just received from her son. So she asks Claus to go and take a look. She replays him the message. He recognizes the name of the town, and he immediately goes into action. Get a great shot of him walking across the rooftops. Look at that art. He summons his wolf. He's calling her. He's calling Lily his wolf girl. I don't really know why. Before it was just Lily. I don't know. Odd change. 
we see that uh, this Santa uses wolves instead of reindeer because that is far more logical and makes much more sense. And uh, and the last shot of Kate, who is having some memories about handsome men calling her by name. We immediately go back into Pola Cola town or Xmasville at the Pola Cola factory. Um, do a really nice job of factory buildings. I actually had a car like that before. Not in 85, I wasn't born in 85. <clears throat> Inside the building, though, we see the old man who owns the Pola Cola factory and his ginger grandson. I believe it's his grandson. Yeah. And some evil Santas wandering around being Santa. Uh, the kid is trying to take over the company. He wants to turn it back into a big thing. He thinks it's a dying under his doddering old grandpa. Uh, the grandpa's like, eh, okay. And he's going to teach him about it. And he uh, gives him some history. Uh, backstory on the whole business and we find out that there is a trademark dispute between uh, Santa and the Pola Cola Corporation um, and here we get a perfectly normal trademark dispute shown in art um, here we have the grandpa history a trademark dispute escalated into an all-out war between Pola Cola and this Klaus character my father my father Agamemnon Partridge the third and I fought him to a standstill Court system's going to be pretty crazy. Especially in the North Pole. Uh, we got a nice shot of this big gazebo here. Just looks like a normal, everyday gazebo. They're still talking about the family, and we start to find out that Grandpa's really not a doddering old fool. He's more of an evil mastermind. And what he's doing is he's trying to turn... Uh, he's trying to basically control... Xmas as a whole. He wants it to no longer be a religious or anything. It's going to be just a corporate entity that he's going to control. And what he's doing is he's kidnapping children and selling them to aliens. And uh, kind of worries his grandson, but he's a little sleazebag, so he quickly comes around. Especially as we meet the alien who is helping the grandpa and the Polo Cola Corporation. I'm going to take a close look at this guy. Because he looks really familiar, and the more we see of him, the more familiar he's going to look. But also they show us what they're doing with the kids. And they're actually harvesting the children's dreams and selling them to aliens who can't dream. It's kind of a an interesting take on a, a well-used trope. Uh, Santa finally enters the town. He sees that the snow is all fake. Uh, some great shots of his wolves. He sends Lily out to... See if she can figure out what's going on. He hears some noise. Sees this sweet Zarnian style motorcycle. I think you know what I'm talking about here. Radiating some sort of awful power. Uh, Lily howls and then is cut off short. And as Santa turns around, he clearly sees something he does not like. And that's uh, not Lobo, the evil Santa. Actually killed Lily and drank her blood. Yeah. This Christmas story is getting pretty intense. Of course, Santa's not having that. Immediately begin to fight. Uh, but this anti-Santa isn't just your normal, not Lobo, anti-Santa. He's actually got a small stone that increases his power because of his harvesting of these children. And tell me that doesn't look like a Zarnian. That is Lobo. Anyway... The fight continues on. We learn a lot more about what's going on with these children. I don't want to ruin too much of it. That's why I'm not reading a lot of the story and I'm trying to be kind of vague. But basically, as Not Lobo monologues, he's just beating the hell out of Santa. And we get these wonderful, wonderful shots. Great art. Not Lobo just wrecking Santa's shop. It is, it is a good thing he's immortal. Uh, we get some nice... Shots of the spaceship as well, just further showing us that this isn't uh, merely an other world, not Santa. This There are aliens involved, and there's a, a bigger plot going on here. Just look at this. So as the story's going, the narrator is still talking from the child's point. She's talking about how she can't dream, there's no hope, and it was all done on purpose. And... <clears throat> 
but as she's monologuing about knowing that the end is coming near, there is some glimmer of hope for Santa Claus, who is just getting rocked. So after getting thrown off of a spaceship, we jump back to the grandpa and his evil ginger grandson, who thinks it's pretty cool that Santa just got killed. That's when the ginger finally realizes that what they're doing is they're making Santa become an evil entity. They're going to use all these zombie Santas to go out and wreak havoc. And then that way everybody will think of, well, Santa, whenever they think of fear. And then the company can come out with the Pola Cola Santa, a nice mustachioed, mullet-wearing, blue-clothed gentleman who understands what Santa and the holiday spirit is all about. Um, honestly, my wrap-up of it is uh, not the greatest. You should definitely check out the story for the full details. But we jump back to Santa Claus, who is out in a hole in the dirt, and there's some blue person that we haven't seen before. She's talking to somebody who we just get a little shadow figure of. They create a portal, she jumps through with Santa Claus, and we enter what is definitely not the Bat Cave in the North Pole. Fantastic art. Definitely nothing like the Bat Cave. Oh yeah, and an army of confused Santas who just watched the real Santa disappear. Uh, and then we meet Grandfather Frost, who, just look at that guy. He's a regal dude. Just building toys and kicking it in the North Pole. We find out that Grandfather Frost is actually helping Lily. Um, he was trying to grab um, some other spirit people, but he just happened to pass San um, Klaus and pull him in instead because he saw what a predicament he was in. He helps Klaus reheal. He um, he fixes Lily. Well, he's in the process of fixing Lily. Also, this is not the Fortress of Solitude. This is the Fortress of Grandfather Frost. Uh, Klaus can't stick around to see if Lily's going to get fixed, though. He needs to go save these children. He made a promise to Kate. He's got to get this done. The granddaughter of Grandfather Frost, who is actually this... attractive young blue woman who helped Klaus before. She comes along. Uh, Grandfather Frost forces her to take a family relic, the Dream Silver Spear of the Sky People. She of course takes it. They immediately jump through a portal back into Xmasville and we see Grandfather Frost shrink down to try and heal Lily. Pretty interesting concept, um, and great artwork. Not what I was expecting him to do to heal her. We go back to the militant Xmasville Nazi town, where we see Santa, the real Santa, and our blue friend, just watching the town. She's trying to warn him that they probably shouldn't stand out in the open, but no. He wants the anti-Santa to see him. He's not gonna go looking for him. He knows what's happening. Shot back to Not Lobo, looking just brutal and evil. Uh, he's marching his merchandise out to sell, realizes that there's a disturbance in his town, and immediately sends the Santas to go and fight Klaus. And we get some great fight scenes. Just look at that. Look at it! This is exactly what you want to see from a Christmas fight scene. Uh, an overly aggressive, not Lobo, just taking it to Santa Claus. It is, it's, it's quality family entertainment, people. As the fight's going, there's more narration from the kids, um, basically talking about how they regain hope. Uh, it looks like they start to get the upper hand when suddenly not Lobo transforms into a giant werewolf. Uh, you have to read the story to find out why. I'm not going to go into all that. That's all part of the story, and it's kind of a, a little twist you don't see coming. Our blue friend gives him a quick zap, and he takes away that silver spear, snaps it in half like it's nothing, 
and just throws it aside. He's about to eat her when Santa realizes that the spear's silver. This is a werewolf. Does a logical move. Stabs it into his heart. Look at that. I mean, this is really why you're paying $7.99 or $7.99 for this book. This is some good stuff. And the story is here. I'm just trying not to ruin it. That's why I'm going through it so ridiculously. Uh, we're going to skip a little bit of the wrap up on exactly what happens. I do want to show you this, though. That's just a really nice page. This part is a little weird. So as I was reading the book, this actually threw me off really bad. Um, I wasn't sure if this was an ad or not, because Boom Studios is the guys that are doing this. This is clearly a book called Xmasville by Charlotte Bright. Up to this point, we haven't seen anybody with the last name of Bright. Um, right, so I just assumed this was like some sort of book Dan Moore did that still had Lily in it. Uh, and then we get this familiar um, narration text here. And it's a, then the welcoming song of his white wolf, a wild and jovious carol on that hot August night as the imitation snow fell forever on Xmasville, December 19th, 2017. Why, that's the now. Still the same narration bubbles. Was anything real that night in the strange town? It sounds too fantastically true, but I know this. I don't consider myself a writer of fiction. So then we kind of realize that this isn't an ad. This is actually a book that uh, our narrator wrote. And we see her at a book signing. She apparently did a great job on this book because people are just absolutely stoked to see her. They brought their kids because clearly this story was kid friendly fun for the whole family and and just a wholesome wholesome tale um <clears throat> as the crowd disperses a little bit somebody slaps their hand on the table and says i have a gift for you it belonged to your grandmother it's yours if you ever need me again she looks up and says thanks i and there's nobody there my grandma died in 1996 we see here this gun that he had given kate earlier that she uh, summoned him when her family went missing and now it's back in this person's hand. She runs out to find him. He's nowhere to be seen. And we see her say her name was Kate, establishing that this is the little girl that Santa indirectly saved for Kate. Now the gun is in her hand, and if she ever needs help, Santa will be there for her. Um, and it's a really good story. It's got great art. It's actually fairly long. Um, this ad is stupid. Weird. I highly recommend it. Um, if you're not willing to pay the $7.99, $7 then check it out online. It's a good read. Anyway, Hell Hydra, baby. Boom!